What is up everybody and welcome to a very special episode of Robitech. This is a four part series that we are doing in partnership with AMD to teach you about building a PC of each size for motherboards. In today's episode, we're gonna be walking you through a build that uses an ATX motherboard. Bonus, it's also an Arctic build, which everybody has to have at least one of in every series for this. This is a full guide. These things are gonna take about half an hour, so feel free to look down in the description below to be able to click through and check out the different table of contents to be able to move throughout this guide as we basically build it. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the parts that we're putting in today's build. Now, remember, the whole point of this guide is that we're trying to make this as universal as possible, so you can interchange parts. So the only thing that's going to be very guide-specific is obviously the AIO install, but for the most part, if you want to change uh, NVMe SSDs, if you want to do things like change fans or CPU or whatever it was, those are actually okay. That should work within this guide without a problem. We try, we're trying our best to make sure that this is useful for any ATX build moving for, forward. For the CPU, we're using the Ryzen 9 5900X. For motherboard, to pair with that, we're using the ROG Strix B550A. For the AIO that's gonna be uh, cooling our CPU, uh, we're using the Corsair H100i Elite Capellix. For the PSU, we're using the 850 watt ASUS White ROG Edition. When we talk about our fans, we're using LL120s. And then for our RAM, we're using the Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB Pro SL. Now, for our um, GPU, of course, we have the absolutely awesome MSI Gaming X Trio um, Radeon 6800 XT. Oh, and last but not least, for the case, we're using the Corsair 5000D. Now that we have walked you through all the entire parts, let's go ahead and move on to what are the parts that you need to build a PC. Let's get going! Let's talk about the tools that we need to build a PC. First and foremost, you need something like a nice big clean area like what I have here. You can use a mod mat like these, which you can pick up on Newegg if you do it on a kitchen table or just a nice big open area, that's okay. Uh, you try and do it not on carpet. Again, it's just to protect from static, ideally like a nice hardwood floor, or kitchen floor. If you are gonna do it on carpet, just be extra safe about static discharge. When we talk about the tools that you need, there's a couple things. Down here on the left-hand side, we have some screwdriver options. I will tell you just having a standard screw screwdriver on hand, some cases uh, require or have like small areas that only a standard screwdriver would fit in. So it's always good to have one of these on hand. We also have options like for instance, things like wow sticks, or in this case, I fix it kits that make things a little easier for some of the smaller components. And so um, depending on how serious you are about building, uh, these are always good options. These right here are zip ties, um, which I always like to use. And these are really for cable management. You also have the option of what are called Velcro ties, which you have right here. I always have a knife on hand. You don't always have a branded knife like I do, but you know, branded knives are always a good thing. Uh, this right here is thermal paste and a thermal paste spreader. The AIO we're going to use comes with thermal paste pre-applied, but should you need to remove it or make a mistake, having some of this on hand is nice. The cool thing about a thermal paste spreader is you get a nice even spread over the entire IHS, which is just better for heat dissipation if you want to do that. This right here is for cutting our um, zip ties. Um, so having something like this to be able to cut the extra off. Um, you can also use scissors, but a little tool like this, which you can get at like Home Depot or any hardware store is really good. Finally, we have our isopropyl alcohol and our paper towels. Like I said, if you should make a mistake and you need to reapply thermal paste, you need to remove that thermal paste using your paper towels or your alcohol in order to make that better. So this should be everything you should need if you wanna do an ideal kind of build. Again, you really can just get by with a screwdriver and a pair of scissors if you really wanted to. So those are all the tools that you need. Now, guess what? We can get started building the PC. This is your overall motherboard. You're obviously gonna need this, so make sure you take it out of the bag. It'll come in an anti-static bag. You just wanna kind of lay it out on your open surface like so. Things that you're gonna need out of the box, first and foremost, you're gonna need your ROG Strix, in this case, your manual for your motherboard. If you're using a different motherboard, when I point to different sections, uh, look in your motherboard manual for things like your motherboard layout to know where things like your front panel headers are, your fan headers, and all those other things. So as I reference them when I'm building, you'll know where to find them. In here, in many of the cases, you'll need these little M.2 screws. These are for installing our M.2s, which you'll see later on. These are in the box. They're very tiny, unfortunately, um, and so don't lose them. And then finally, if you have any external hard drives, these are called SATA cable connections. You'll wanna make sure that you have these available should you have an external three and a half inch or two and a half inch uh, hard drive that you're gonna be attaching as well. In our case, we're not gonna be using these, but I wanna make sure you're aware if you are doing a build and adding some additional stuff, this is what you'll need for hooking up an SSD. Let's walk through real quick, what are the different parts on a motherboard? First and foremost, up here in the top left, we have our EPS CPU power connector. We have a four pin and an eight pin here. 
Over here in the top right, we have fan headers. Uh, this light gray one, and not all motherboards will be like this, this light gray one is your CPU one. And the next one is either called a system fan or a normal, just basically uh, AIO pump header. But you must plug something into the CPU header or your BIOS will throw an error. Next to this, you have your four pin uh, RGB header. This is the non-addressable one. RGB headers, when you plug things into RGB, it'll either be four or three pin, really easy for you to figure out. But again, the most powerful connections on this board are your four pin and your other RGB headers down below. Here you see a three pin, five volt addressable. More RGB means more power. That's, I mean, you can put the most powerful stuff in here, but unless you have tons of lights, this PC will seriously underperform. So uh, those are your RGB connections. Over here, this is called your 24 pin ATX power connection. This is actually what powers the rest of your motherboard for the most part. So down here, this is USB 3.2, pretty much the worst connector on the planet, but, and I'll show you a little bit later why. You just, this one has the biggest potential of bending pins. Don't worry, we'll walk you through it, you'll be fine. This right here is for plugging in your memory. This is dual channel. Down here at the bottom, we have our SATA connections. Should you have external hard drives, like a two and a half or three and a half inch hard drive, that's where you're gonna plug this stuff in. Down here, this is your front panel connection. We have more system fans, which we showed you before. These are USB 2. Uh, we've already talked about our two RGB headers. And then finally, down here in the far left is what's called our HD audio. That's where you basically get all your audio hookups. And then finally, we've got your PCIe connections. This is basically where you plug in, plug in things like your video card, your capture cards, etc. You've got a Bi-16, which is for your GPU specifically. That's where you're gonna wanna stick it. You've got a Bi-8 where you can stick things like, you know, an Elgato capture card or you name it. And they've got Bi-1s where you might do stuff like like internal uh, SSDs or things like uh, LAN cards or Bluetooth cards or whatever might go in here. Underneath these two shields are what are called N.2 slots. And then finally, uh, you have your CPU socket we talked about, and this is where we're going to install our CPU. So that is our motherboard in a nutshell. If you wanna go back and reference this stuff, this is a great place to just go back if you have a question, and we'll try to show you where all of these things are very, very easily. And again, if you have that same question, always look in your motherboard manual. It's all mapped out there as well. Now let's go ahead and start building our PC. We're gonna start with all the components that we have here. So we've got CPU, we've got our two M.2s, we've got a 970 EVO Plus, uh, one terabyte, and then because we can do PCIe Gen 4 and one connection, we've got a 500 gig Western Digital SN850. And then for our RAM, we're using, like I said, that Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL. So for the CPU, I'm gonna go and take it out like so pop out our CPU, making sure that you grab it on the sides, take this to 90 degrees, drop it in like that. You're just gonna pop that arm down just like that. And voila, you've installed a CPU. Next up, we're gonna go install our RAM. Now remember, if you are going to do RAM and you are going to, and you don't have four DIMMs like we do, make sure that you check your motherboard manual to ensure that you are installing it uh, in the right slot. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna unclick each one of these. There's a little slot in the dim. You're just gonna line it up like this. And you're just gonna snap it in. It's gonna get a good click. Make sure it's clicked in on both sides. Same thing for each individual one. And there you go. Now your RAM is installed. Let's install our M.2s. For this particular motherboard, they're both covered by shields. So the first thing you wanna do is take off both of the shields like so, so there's one. And on the other side, there is these little peels. I'm gonna peel these off of the thermal pads. These are thermal pads. What these are for is these are helping dissipate heat off of the M.2 drive. So there's our top one. We're gonna do the same thing with our bottom one here. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our standoffs. There's 2280, 2260, and 2242. We care about 2280, which is the length of the M.2. So we're gonna stick a standoff in each one of these. There's a little slot in the PCB. And we're just gonna stick it in just like that and then it's like a diving board. Then we're gonna take our two itty bitty screws and they are itty bitty. This is where we use like smaller screwdrivers is always nice, but not necessary. Just like that. There we go. Now, once you've got all that done, there's gonna be these little peels that you just gotta kinda take off. Make sure that all the little plastic peels are done. One on the IO shield. And there you go, our motherboard is ready to install. Okay, so now for case prep. What we wanna do is we wanna take this case and we strip, wanna strip it down to its bare components. So we'll start by popping off the top. Also up here is a dust cover. Remove the glass. On the back side, same situation. 
pull this off. We wanna make sure that we remove any extra parts. Pop the front off like this. Pop the shield off just by giving it a push. And then our case is essentially stripped down to the bare necessities. Because we're using different fans in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove all of the other fans. Remove the four screws from each corner. So here on the back, we actually have a fan hub. What you wanna do is you wanna unplug both of these two connectors from your fan. As you can see now, I can very carefully pull out the fan. And you're gonna to wanna to save these, by the way, because we're gonna replace them. So save the screws. Now our case is completely ready for us to basically do the additional work we need to do to finish doing this build and move forward. So we're gonna kind of clean up our workspace and then we're gonna install our motherboard. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your motherboard from its sides on its edges. You can kind of grab the top of the IO shield like so. And there's little screw, there's a little pin right here that you basically wanna get it in and that will get the motherboard in and aligned. After that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and screw in each of our motherboard screws. And there's nine, there's, sorry, in this case, there's eight total. Now that we have our motherboard in, what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna install our additional fans. We're using a total of four LL120 RGB fans for this particular build, which means we're gonna need a 1-3 pack, which you do wanna purchase one three pack because you'll need the equipment that's in here, and then a single additional fan for our exhaust fan. Inside of the three pack of LL120s, you will have the following. You have a USB connector, which connects to your Lighting Node Pro, which is what this is. You also have an RGB hub, which is going to be where all your RGB is for your fans. This allows you to connect your RGB hub with your Lighting Node Pro, which supports up to two of these if you needed it. And then finally, it's got fan, uh, fan screws for all of the fans uh, in individual baggies. So that's what's in here. You will need all of this for this build. Check your holes. They line up just perfectly on the top holes like so. What you're gonna do is great, grab your screws. You're gonna wanna start screwing in each corner. Install the other two. But again, both of these cables though, are gonna route to this middle slot that we're showing you right here, like that. So both of the bottom fans are gonna go through that same middle slot. Okay, let's install this last one. Pretty easy to route this one, uh, so you don't have to worry as much about it. It's just this top left corner up here. So we've just installed all the fans, but what I'm gonna show you right now is how to plug them all in. First thing I did is I took all of these bunches of cables and I routed them through this one slot right here, and we have all of that stuff ready to go here. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, Car your Corsair RGB hub, and then you're gonna start in one, and you're gonna go one, two, three, because you need to have them in sequential order. So there's two, and then again, they're all the yellow ones, and then there's three. And then in the back fan, is your fourth one, so there's four. And they have to be one, two, three, four. Don't worry about your, your other fans yet. Now what we're gonna do is hook up the rest of this. So what we're gonna do is we're then gonna take this cable, and this cable goes into the top, just like this. You're gonna then take this cable and plug it into one on the RGB, onto the uh, Lighting Node Pro, which is what this is. And then on the very bottom of the Lighting Node Pro is another little cable that you're then gonna plug this in here. And now, all our fans are hooked up. We'll worry about cable managing this later, but that is the system that you need to have in place. Finally, let's take these fans that you have right here, and you have a fan hub for controlling these. So what we're gonna do, same thing, grab all of our fans, and you're gonna start from the left and go over. So here's fan one, fan two, fan three, and then finally, up here, we'll plug in fan four. Now you've got everything connected, and we're ready to go ahead and put in our AO, but we have everything set up. We'll worry about cable managing it later. Okay, so now that we've got our 
fans installed, our fans are hooked up. Now it's time to go ahead and get our AIO stand up. Uh, starting from the left, this is our lighting node hub. Um, for this case, we're only gonna be using this particular hub and for RGB for the fans that are connected to the AIO. Uh, here is our screws for basically mounting our fans and also for mounting our radiator to the case. This one that says AMD AM4, this is the bracket and the bracket things that we need to hook up our pump to our motherboard. We've got our two ML120 Pro white fans that come with the AIO. And then finally, we've got the radiator and pump, uh, the radiator and pump assembly that we're going to be using. This does have, just for the sake so you guys know, this does have pre-applied thermal paste. So try very hard not to touch this. Uh, so we don't need to worry about it. It's also a very, it's also a nice uh, amount of surface area. So you don't have to worry about applying your own because it'll cover most of what's called the IHS or the top of the CPU. So now we've got this, let's go ahead and get it started and get it set up. Stick your AIO like this with the pump on the right hand side. And we're gonna stick our fans top up like this. Now again, you wanna make sure that the cables are coming down from the bottom. Then within your screws, what you wanna grab is these screws, the longer screws, and we're gonna screw each one of these in. Now the way to start is to start in the corners and just make sure that you're just gonna get them started. And this will center the, center the screw, the fans on the radiator. You're just gonna run these through this middle slot right here. Just take your screw, put it on the screwdriver, then holding in this very awkward position, like so. All you gotta do is get one into the far right. Just don't, you don't have to tighten it all the way. Then grab a second set. And again, all you gotta do is get it started, and then now you've got enough to basically set it where you want. I'm gonna put it in so it's like that. So again, so you can get screws in every hole. That's what you're checking. Now we're gonna do is just finish screwing in the rest of our screws. Now, for this portion, starting with lying down, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this. There's one cable here that we're gonna run up and through. So we'll do that post weight mounting, but then there's this other cable right here which is your power cable for your pump. What we're gonna do is you see the CPU fan header right here. We're gonna basically plug this in right there into our, CP, into our uh, CPU fan header. So showing you how to do that right now. Even if it's a three pin, it will work there on the four pin. Then you're gonna go into this AMD AM4 pack and take this out. You're gonna remove these two little brackets like so. Then in here, is a different bracket that we're gonna to have to install in order to mount this AIO. So you're gonna take these out like this. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this and we're gonna take this off like so. And then gripping the sides, just pull down. Comes off pretty easily. Same thing up here, taking off the top. And then what you're gonna do is with this facing up, just gonna slip that into the bottom like that. And take the second same thing and you're gonna slip this one onto the top. Now you got your new brackets in and your thing is ready to install. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, these little, this little part, you're gonna hold it in just like that with your in between your two fingers, and you're gonna take one of these little screws, and you're just gonna screw it underneath, but just get it started. So not too tight. So it just hangs like that. And then you're gonna repeat on the other side, put that little part in, holding with your fingers like this. You gotta have some ambidextrous fingers. And then again, screwing in just like that, just to get it started. Not too much, like two or three, and then you're good to go. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip this over. So we have these little latches, and what they're gonna do is you're gonna clip them on both sides. So then what I do is I have a tendency to clip that one, put it down, and then using my thumb, Clip the bottom one too, over both latches like so. And then start screwing to tighten it on both sides. And eventually it'll be tight enough that it'll just be latched like that. And just screw till finger tight. And then once you kind of can't use your fingers anymore, grab your screwdriver, 
and then alternate between the two. You don't want to screw this until it stops. You just want to screw it in until it doesn't move. And there you go. Now your AIO is installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this cable right here and we're going to route it through. What you're going to do is just lift up and there's a little hole in the back and you can see it right here kept popping out. It's going to route that through like that until it's all the way taut on the front. And then there's also this little cable, which is attached to your, your CPU. Again, you're gonna have to like finger hook. It was one of those, those tough ones. Finger hook and pull it through. It's still connected, so you don't wanna pull too hard. You're gonna finger pull that through. And then once you've got all of this stuff kind of tight, and then just zip tie that. And this is just to hold this in place so it stays nice and clean. Let's hook up all of the AIO cabling on the other side. So what we have here is all of the cables that we have for our AIO plus the RGB and uh, fan controller for the AIO itself. So what we're gonna do here is first we're gonna plug in and there's actually a little white line on here. So you're gonna take this cable, it's gonna uh, set it in just like that with the white line lining up just like so. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two RGB, same as what we did for the first fan hub, and they have to be in sequential order. So we plug that one into one, and we plug this one into two. And you can see why I hooked up the other ones first before hooking up this, because we don't wanna mix up these two uh, connections, specifically being that um, the way Corsair stuff works is it has to be um, it has to be the same type of fan because these are ML fans and these are LL fans. They can't work on the same hub. Second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and plug this fan into one, like so. We're gonna plug this fan into two, like so. Okay, so now we've got all that done. What we're gonna do here real quick is we're gonna quickly cable manage, get everything cleaned up, and then I'm gonna talk about why I did what I did for the cable management, and then we'll move on to our front panel connectors. And voila, we now have a cable managed set of cables. Now I'm just gonna talk a little bit, you've kind of seen the zip tie, the, the time lapse of showing us what it is, but really what you're looking for is just natural places to clump things. And again, putting things in groups. So everything having to do with the fans and RGB and AIO is all here. Um, again, what I've not cable managed yet is all the stuff that still has to get plugged into the motherboard or uh, are messed around with. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start running and routing all of our cables that we need for our front panel. So we'll start with our HD audio. Here's our HD audio. It says HD audio on it. That one's gonna go on the far right side over here. Then we have our front panel connections which they'll say on them, they'll say reset switch, power switch, and there's also one that says power plus, uh, power LED plus and minus. You're gonna take all four of those, and you're gonna basically route those into this little corner right here. This is the USB, obviously, for the AIO and this hub. This is also gonna go in this little bin right here. This one is also gonna go in the same spot right here. Then we're gonna take our USB 3, the worst connector in the planet, you're gonna shove that kind of sideways into this spot up here. It's gonna be kind of awkward to kind of push through there, but it will eventually go through. Uh, this is for your fan hub right here. We're also gonna move this right down here. So let's turn this over and hook all of our things into our motherboard. But let's start up here with the USB 3.2. The big thing about this one is you wanna make sure that you're coming at this from a 90 degree angle and straight down. This has the biggest chance of actually getting bent pins. You're just gonna stick this in like this and put it straight down and then that is connected. Let's do our front panel connections. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the power switch and plug that one in that goes just like this, two pins over. Then we're gonna take the reset switch button. That one goes right underneath the power switch. And then you're gonna take your plus and minus with your plus on the outside and then your minus on the inside. You're gonna plug that next to the power switch. Now we've got our fan hub. That's gonna go into this header right next to the power switch. This just gets connected just like this. And then we're gonna take these, these USB, and again, they're keyed one way. They've got a missing, they've got a filled in pin, so there's only one way to plug them in. Just gonna plug them in right next to each other. There's one, and the other one goes right next to it, just like that. Then finally, last cable, your HD audio, and that's gonna go, again, also keyed one way, has one filled in pin, and there we go. Now our front panels are all connected. Flip this over, just one more little bout of cable management, and then we're gonna put in our GPU. Not all of our 
graphics cards are gonna come with these, but some have a sand anti-sag bracelet bracket. So if you're following along with this exact build, I wanna show you how to install that as well. Um, one thing you do want to take the time to do is make sure that you go through and you peel all of the plastic. There's going to be plastic on each of the fan tops. There can be plastic on the other side. You want to make sure you take off the protective cover for the PCB connector here that's going to go into the PCI and make sure everything's just ready to go. Once you've got that done, let's go to our top down. And what you're going to have to do is you can see that this, this slot is the one we're going to do. So we're going to take almost all of these off and unscrew them just because we have a anti-sag bracket. So for this, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two out like this, put them off, set them aside, store them in your box. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your card, you're gonna line it up. And don't be too hasty here, it'll line up. Again, what you're doing is you're looking, there's little slots, just basically sits down behind. And then there's a little lock that's back here on the PCI, when you get it lined up, just push it in and you'll hear a click. And that's that little lock, locking the card in. If you need to remove this, you need to make sure you unlock this in order to take out the GPU. People have damaged their GPUs, think you can just take it out, but this actually locks it in place. Now, when you look at this, and we're gonna put it on top, you can see that we're gonna need to remove the bottom, these three screws right here in order to keep this. And this is just to keep your GPU from sagging. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these three in, these three screws, but we're gonna keep these uh, protectors in just to make sure we don't get a ton of dust. So and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your GPU sag bracket, push all these back in, and you're gonna set this on top, but make sure all of these brackets are pushed all the way in. Now that that's done, we're going to install our cable extensions. And these are those little cables. Again, you could, you could skip them depending on what you want to do from your PSU. I just like the way they look from an attractiveness standpoint in terms of how they make a build look much cleaner. So we're going to get those plugged in. And then from there, turn this over, turn it on our PS, put in our PSU, and then uh, we'll basically be good to go. What you want to do is you want to see where the clip is on the case, I mean on the cable and then almost like you're gonna plug it in, but don't plug it in yet. So now you know which direction the cable's gonna fly, hold. So in this case, the cable comb, the cable attachment's on the bottom, and then what we're gonna do is you're going to attach your cable combs for this. And for each one of these individual things, we're gonna, you're gonna need to do this for every single one of your cables. So let's get these installed real quick and I'll show you what the final, final bit looks like. Like that like that. So pretty straightforward. Okay, so there, those are all controlled. Now we have everything ready to just plug in our power. Okay, so let's talk about the parts that you need for your PSU. So one of the things we are gonna need is we're going to need, obviously our white, very attractive and beautiful, semi-smelly PSU. We've got SATA. These are for our all of our SATA connections you've seen are dangling down before us. So we've got that. These are two uh, PCIe uh, VGA connections. You can tell those because they're split um, on the other end, but we're gonna set do them individually. So we've got two of those. We've got our motherboard um, AT, uh, ATX power cable. And then finally, we've got a single CPU connection. You also need your PSU screws. First thing we do is we're gonna take our peripherals. We're gonna plug that in right there. And then we're gonna take our two VGA, you're gonna take the parts in this, and if you're using certain PSUs, it'll say PSU on it. If not, it's the part that it isn't split in this case. You're gonna plug these into right here. So we're gonna do one right there, one right there. So there's that. Then we're gonna take the same thing for our CPU one. We're gonna plug that in right there, like so. And then finally, we're gonna take the bottom two which is your motherboard. And again, on this one, it's actually split. It also, this one does not say PSU, but you'll know it's the one that's split that actually plugs in the PSU. You're gonna plug that one in right there. You're gonna plug the other one in right there. Now, you can move these around. I just have a tendency to clump them together because it looks better, but then uh, that's just me. And then what I'll do is I'll take this little wrap around here, and then I'll wrap this around just to keep them kind of clumped when I put them in. Okay, let's get it inside of the case. Just to give ourselves room to put in the PSU, down here at the bottom, you'll actually see that we have a series of hard drive trays. Now what we can do is there's two screws that we can loosen. 
in the front and the back like this. And then literally it just lifts up like this, move it over to, and then you just slide it back on like that and then just screw this down. And now you can see we have a lot more room in our PSU shroud. I'm gonna slide it in just like this with the fan down, pushing all the way back and then up until the, up and up into the back like that. Just screw in your PSU. Okay, now that your screws are in, we're now going to lay this flat and finish connecting up all of our power. Ugh. Take our CPU cable, clip just goes on, and then you push them in just like that. So there's our first one. Because we're gonna grab all of these. So there's one. Just gonna plug it in just like that. They're only keyed one way. Plug it in, make sure it goes all the way. There we go. All of this cable management is done, but now we're gonna take this little door. Now our cable management is really nice because you can't see it, but it's all there. And we're gonna set this up. Put our back on. Same way we put it off, so just clipping it back on. Pop that on like that. Take our top on, just like this. There we go. Just clipping in down here. Boom. Corsair logo goes at the bottom. There's just little nubs. And the build is complete. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in power. I'm going to plug in an HDMI, just so I can see that it posts. And I'm gonna plug in LAN. Then we're gonna flip this switch to on. And I'm gonna hit this button. And badow. Guys, I think the build came out awesome. I hope that this was very helpful in teaching you uh, in this step-by-step -step guide. Let us know down in the comments below, hey, was there something we could have done better? Did our awesome shots from Josiah and all the B-roll and everything make it easy for you to understand how to plug all of this stuff in? And what could we do to maybe make it just a little bit more generic for you in the future? Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video, either here on Newegg or on Roby Tech, whichever you prefer. Anyway, guys, this has been absolutely awesome. Super appreciate you hanging out with us for the last half hour or so, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.